And joining us now is Father James Flavin, who is a President Emeritus of St. John Vianney Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Kevin. It's good to be here. Uh, maybe if you could just start off by telling us a little bit about St. John Vianney Center and uh, some of the services it provides. Sure. Uh, St. John Vianney Center has been uh, in existence now for about 70 years, uh, founded in the Archdiocese of Philadelphia. Uh, is a, a place to help priests and, and women religious uh, when they're struggling with behavioral health issues. Um, talk about like the strategy, I guess, or you know, um, is there a different type of strategy that you do to um, help um, priests and religious as you would uh, a lay person, for instance, and how you go about doing yeah, that? Yeah, well, we're a licensed psychiatric hospital, like any other hospital, so oftentimes priests or women religious come in just really uh, beaten up by life. And so we're able to, to take them in, treat them physically, uh, emotionally, and most importantly, spiritually, uh, to help them get their vocation back in, in line and, and get them back to work. The majority of folks that come to us stay with us three to four months and go back to ministry, happy, healthy, and holy. It's, it's wonderful work because we see the results so often, and it's been going on for 70 years. And I'm sure with, um, uh, priests, religious, face the same situations that the lay people would uh, with, you know, um, you, any type, type of temptation or anything like that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting. Sometimes people hold priests up on a pedestal, but, you know, in the ordination ritual, it says that God chooses these men from among men. Uh, we're not angels from the beginning. We're just like everybody else who've received a call, and we struggle in life like everybody else. It's It's the nature of the human condition. Um, and sometimes we, obviously, from the past, we fail like everybody else fails. Uh, but it's good to have places that can, you know, really help someone get the, themselves back on track. And I know uh, it does assessments as well, and that's uh, critical nowadays, too, with assessing whether someone's ready for religious life and how important that is. Yeah, so we, we travel around the country and, and do the psychological assessments for uh, seminaries and for uh, novitiates, for women and men religious. And, you know, psychology is not the be-all and end-all. Yeah. Uh, you know, God does call us through our weakness. But there are some signs maybe that this might not be the right vocation for somebody. Yeah. Do you find new technological world, too, that there are more temptations or, you know, some more things that can, you know, disrupt someone's life uh, nowadays? One of the interesting things that we've been working on is, is the technology piece. Uh, for seminarians and new folks coming into seminaries, we say under the age of 25, we call them digital natives, you know, because they, they understand it, all of that technology. Um, you know, an iPhone is as much a part of them as their, their right arm is. And, and sometimes there's even some struggles today with, with socializing because of that. Mm. that. That's across the board. We, we see that. How do we help our young people? To socialize, but to be able to preach the gospel, you can't text that to somebody. You need to sit with someone and have that encounter face to face as Jesus did. So we're, we're trying to help our, our seminaries in, in formation to, to look at those issues and, and help young men. Um, it's also a problem with, with older priests because we're the digital immigrants. We don't know how to use it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's very easy to today, especially with the, the internet addiction issues. Um, yeah. And that's, that's married, that's, that's every, that's men and women. We're seeing an increase across the, the country, around the world, actually. I was just uh, working with seminarians in Rome from around the world. It's, it's the same issues around the world. Um, and, it, and it becomes addictive. You know, we, we've, we'd, we've done some research with MRIs, and you can see the brain firing uh, higher on some of the Internet issues than you can with cocaine. It's, it's really that addictive. So the shopping, the, the compulsiveness, the uh, internet pornography issues, all of those things hit anybody. So we, we need to start educating us old folks yeah. on, on how to manage that. You know, what are some ways to, for them to maintain their sanity, their, their mental health? And... Well, you know, Pope John Paul II in Pastoris Dabo Vobis spoke of the four pillars that we, we all need to pay attention to, the intellectual, the pastoral, the spiritual. Um, and the emotional life, or the human side of things. Um, 
what we need to really focus on is the human side. We've done a great job with the spiritual and the intellectual, but the, the human side, we, we need to, to start to beef up, to start to help guys realize you can't work 12 hours a day. You need to get away. You need exercise. You need to eat right. Um, and that's a challenge when you have three parishes and you have you know three parishes drawing you to very important things. Um, but there's a lot more stress on priests today than there ever was before. And Pope Francis keeps talking about fraternity, the need for fraternity. Uh, actually, Pope Benedict, in those four pillars, said maybe that human side should include more fraternity. You know, it's not just learning about me, but it's learning how do we work together as priests uh, to support each other. So anything we can do to help priests get together more often and support each other, uh, and anything parishioners can do to help their priests. Yeah. You know, if you see fathers looking tired or he's, you know, remember, if you've got three places, most of us are old bachelors who, who aren't good cooks. Yeah. Um, you know, the blueberry muffin for lunch and the peanut butter sandwich for dinner and the cookie at, at dinner, you know, that's not enough to keep you going. We, we need support also to make sure we stay healthy. Yeah. Well, it's a great institute. And uh, thank you, Father, for being here. And I know you're you're, you were in Philadelphia, you're back in Boston yes, now, yes. and uh, now what are you doing here in Boston? <laughs> it's great being home, I, I enjoy it. I loved the work I was doing at St. John Vianney Center, and I still continue uh, to support and work with them. Yeah. But my main ministry is, is the uh, Episcopal Vicar of the Central Region of the Archdiocese, uh, which is a, a wonderful work. I get to work with Cardinal Sean and represent him in the, the Central Region, which is Boston, Cambridge, Somerville, Brookline, and Winthrop. Uh, it's the 58 parishes plus all the, the wonderful uh, institutions that we have in the central region. Uh, it's, it's just great work, just getting around, you know, being present to everybody. So I, I'm enjoying it very much. Okay. Sounds like you're living a busy life as well. I am. I hope yeah. you're getting better than a blueberry muffin. Well, no, so far the shirt still fits. So that's... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks so much, Father. Thanks, Kevin. All right. It's great to be here.